when we moved here, we learned some things, some nuanced things we really wish we would have known. Do you want to learn some of those things and more? Well, stick around because we're getting after it right now. What's up guys, this is John Burton over at Woosaw Properties in Durango, Colorado. If this is your first time to this channel and you wanna know everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play here in Durango, then make sure to click that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, so that way you're notified every time we release a video. Now we're getting calls, text, emails from people wanting to move to Durango every single day. If you're even thinking about moving to Durango, make sure to give us a call, text, email, We've got your back when it comes to moving to Durango. All right, so the first thing that's relatively easy to find out, but not as well known, is the median home prices. Um, again, I mentioned this a lot. We're filming this in the beginning of August 2022. So depending on when you're watching this, this could completely change. Um, but right now, the big ones you probably want to know are single family homes in town and the county, right? If you're looking for some acreage out of town, your average price is gonna be about seven, not average, medium price is gonna be about 702. And then medium price in town for a single family home is about 790. I will say right now, the inventory is pretty darn low. Um, we're seeing definitely an increase as this summer has come upon us, um, but the inventory is still pretty low. So that's something to keep in mind, um, especially if you're looking for something just in town and you're real selective at being just in town, it is definitely harder to find something because there's just not as many homes. So the next thing is the wildlife. Bear, bear, a bear. Now you're probably generally aware there's wildlife in Durango, it's a mountain town. Um, I'm gonna, I'll be brutally honest with you. There was somebody that was attacked by a bear, uh, I believe it was last year, um, off of County Road 203. So stuff like that does happen. You wanna be prepared, go on your walks with some bear spray. Um, I don't think it's as big of a deal if you're in town, but when you're going on hikes out of town um, or even just in the mountains close to town, have some bear spray, go with someone, be aware. Um, there are plenty of coyotes out here. Make sure you bring your dog in, watch your dog when you're letting them go to the bathroom in your backyard, stuff like that. That's really important. Um, we've got big old turkey vultures, eagles, like, this is definitely not just a con by any means. It's incredible out here. Um, you'll see deer just crossing the road. That's something else to be aware of that, I mean, I was just driving home from, um, from town the other day on 550 going north and there was a car just smashed in, looked like completely totaled. Another car that was smashed into the other car because it hit a deer. There's a big deer, a big buck on the side of the road. And then these cars had spun around and they were on the other side of the road. Um, it's really tragic for the deer, but tragic for people too, right? Because they got to be got to be aware you can definitely get injured from hitting deer. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to hit the deer and, and I'll be fine. Um, there's some really big deer. There's also some really big elk out here that are just grazing right along the side of the, um, they're eating grass right along the side of the highway. Um, they're in town, they're out of town, they're all over the place. So you really want to be aware of deer as you're driving through town, especially as you're going north um, north near Silverton, Uray, Ridgecrest, um, or Ridgeway, I mean. And so that's something else to be aware of. At the same time, super amazing. We just had deer walking through our backyard the other day, a couple bucks. Um, they kind of see us, they look around. Like, it's really cool seeing deer, seeing eagles flying over the river. Um, there's a spot, if you shoot me a message, I can tell you there's a really cool spot where I see eagles pretty often. Um, we've got Pastoris Reservoir, where you'll see eagles over there. They're just looking for looking for fish. Um, we've seen a spot where eagles are nesting up on this ridge going north out of uh, near in Hermosa. And so, I mean, the nature is incredible out here. Um, on Lake Nighthorse the other day, we were kayaking and saw a pair of bald eagles just flying right over Lake Nighthorse. I'm sure they were looking for some fish. Well, actually, they were. I saw one fly down and, and try to grab one. I think if I remember right, he missed him. Um, but really cool scenery out here. Uh, and so there's a lot of really cool stuff as far as, uh, as far as nature goes. All right, so the next one's snow. Obviously you're probably aware it snows here, of course. 
The one to be aware of is when you're looking, or the thing to be aware of is when you're looking for homes, really be aware of, or look into, or ask us, of course, if the city plows these roads. Um, and sometimes the city does, but then you've got a long driveway, right? And so a lot of the times, if you've got your own private driveway, you're gonna need to plow that. Um, so you wanna look into maybe getting an ATV, putting a plow on the end. And then the question is, do you wanna do that? Do you wanna deal with that when it's snowing and cold every morning um, and have to plow that driveway? We've got a lot of clients that just say, forget it, I'm not gonna deal with that. Um, the other thing is you can pay someone to come plow your driveway. They usually do a great job. Um, people are really good at that out here. I've mentioned this in other videos, but what's really cool about the guys that are snow plowing is they bust their butt. They work hard out here. I'll be, you know, get up at 5 a.m. and you see them plowing our roads already. Or we'll be coming home and it's starting to snow at 8 p.m. and they'll be plowing out at 10, 11 p.m. right after we're eating some pizza or whatever on our way home. And so that is another option. You could talk to somebody that's plowing the local neighborhood and say, hey, can you just hit my driveway? See what it costs. And that's another option. Um, I never want clients that are looking to buy an awesome home in the mountains to be, uh, be swayed away from buying a home because of that reason. You definitely wanna put snow tires on your, on your vehicle. Um, you don't need anything crazy special, but it's good to have snow tires, especially if you want to go to Uray, you want to go to Silverton, you want to do some trips in the winter. Um, just smart to have some snow tires. It's not a necessity to have a 4x4 vehicle here, in my opinion, but if you do, all the better. You're just able to access more. So the next one is rodents. Rodents! That's something to be aware of. Um, for one, I was, and I guess this is a little bit off the topic of rodents, but I was showing a house that looked like it had um, had flies all over the place. And there was fly traps all over. Um, we actually called someone and found out that uh, it's really difficult to get rid of all these flies um, in these log cabins. Now, don't take my word for that. I'm sure that's not necessarily accurate in every location or every home or every, um, you know, you just wanna go case by case, but that's something definitely to be aware of. Um, call a pest company, ask them what the deal is with this specific house. Can they come look at it? Um, that's something to be aware of with those wood or log cabin type homes. Another thing is we had um, mice going through our, uh, our attic area. We are not city mice. We are just mice. And so something to always be checking, maybe have someone come out annually to check. Um, we had them chewing up stuff up there and that was, that was pretty frustrating. It was actually when we were traveling. So we had to figure out how to deal with that. Um, another thing is we actually had a woodpecker packing a hole right in the side of our house. That's a pileated woodpecker. Um, we have wood, uh, like wood paneling and they were packing a hole in the side of our house. So again, you just wanna be aware of some of these things. These aren't the end of the world. Um, the other one is bears, right? These bears are massive. I mentioned bears earlier. Um, but you always wanna be taking your trash in your garage or um, yeah, just don't take your trash out till the morning of trash day. Don't be leaving that stuff out overnight. Um, really not a good thing. We don't wanna be attracting bears to your neighborhood, um, to wherever you live. And, um, and then there's snakes. Two scorpions, two rattlesnakes. So we have, it's kind of funny, my wife isn't a big fan of it, but we have snakes that will get right inside our garage door that are, is going out the back. Um, and they'll be right in the inside corner of the door um, just because they can get out of the, um, get out of the, or get in the shade, I guess. And so I found the skin of the snake laid in there just the other day. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. They're just garter snakes, um, but you know, something to be aware of. Rattlesnakes are definitely up here as well. Um, you don't necessarily get away from those rattlesnakes when you're at this higher elevation definitely see those out here. Um, as you go to the dog park, which is right across from the Doubletree uh, Hotel, as you're, right as you're getting into town, right across the river there, they have big signs up that are saying beware of rattlesnakes. Um, so definitely beware of that in that area especially. Um, as you get a little more desertous, you'll see rattlesnakes. All right, the next thing you guys need to know is be prepared. Be prepared. Right, don't feel like it's like LA or you know Phoenix or somewhere where you can just call for help and you're good to go, right? Especially if you're going driving in the mountains, if you're going for a hike, even if it's a hike close by, really wanna be prepared. 
a lot of places do not have cell signal. So we actually live north of Durango um, and the cell signal just goes out. Um, there's multiple, I was looking at nextdoor.com, it looks like the tower is overloaded. Um, I don't know the exact deal what's going on. Like we are only, what, 10, 12, 12 minutes from downtown or from the edge of town. And you basically have very little signal. So then you go up the mountain into like Hermosa Creek Trail or up there somewhere. Um, pretty tough to get signal. So really be aware of that. Could be worth getting one of those devices called, uh, I think they're called Spot, where you can uh, signal for someone to help you. And have water, have a couple gallons in your car just at all times. Throw a sleeping bag in there, throw some food in there, and just have it in there. Like worst case, you're prepared, right? And so that's something I recommend, especially in the winter time, right? You never know what's gonna happen as far as if we just get dumped on with snow, you're traveling up north, uh, you just never know. So I really recommend just being prepared. Again, going back to stuff like bear spray, um, just being aware of your surroundings at all times, right? Animal walks up on you, you know, you just wanna be aware. And, uh, and so again, it just goes back to being prepared. If you can, I highly recommend take a medical first aid class. Um, take some wilderness survival type classes. And it just gives you more preparedness. And honestly, they're a ton of fun too. All right, so the next thing is make sure to pick, at least this is what I recommend, pick the area you wanna live in before picking the home. Don't just say, that's a gorgeous home, let's live there. Um, the reason why is Durango varies so much, especially when you take our whole county, it varies so much. So there's areas where there's very little water rights or no water rights. Uh, very little water then there's areas with great water rights uh, then there's areas where in all the photos it looks great it looks like oh i could drive up there with my subaru and it's a we actually recently last summer sold a home with a 12 percent incline grade up to the home um, now we did a really good job of taking photos of the that road and really advertising it but a lot of the times you won't see that uh, and so really be aware of that it's worth um, having us go out there, shoot a video for you, having someone shoot a video for you, really know what you're getting into because in the summer, that road is perfectly fine. No big deal. It's easy to drive up. Got plenty of parking up at the top, but in the winter, it's another deal, right? You want to be aware of driveways, of elevation. Um, there's other homes where you're only, let's say you're 15 minutes outside of town. Or let's, let's say 20 right but you're going north from town you're now 2,000 feet in elevation higher than uh, than town and so now you're just getting dumped on with snow and maybe you're not a big fan of snow and you'd rather live south of town where they get a lot less snow and so you really can live in a part of town where or part of the county I should say where it gets quite a bit less snow than another uh, area and so you will see home prices vary. You might say, why is that home price quite a bit less? Well, they might have hauled water, right? They might not have access to water. Um, we have a friend that has a well and it's not quite deep enough. And so it really stinks, but some people do have to haul water. Um, there are some alternatives to you personally hauling water, having to buy a truck, all that kind of stuff. If you just love the property, there are companies that will haul the water in for you. So you just wanna make sure that you've got the right setup to where they can plug in their hose and it can shoot the water into the tank. Uh, we recently had a client, again, that had hauled water. They had a tank up top, tank down low. The company would plug it in right by the road and then it would send the water up to the tank up at the top. So you definitely wanna look at elevation. Hey, is this a lot higher than town or is it even a little bit lower than town? And am I south where it's a little bit more uh, deserty? Uh, but with that, it comes with less, um, less water rights a lot of the time. Just depends though. One other place it snows a lot and you are gonna see lower home prices is the Viacito Lake area. Um, so be aware, there's some gorgeous homes out there. There's some great property out there. It's nice and forested. You're right on the lake. You're right on the Pine River, which is amazing fishing, by the way. I love fishing the pine. Um, just a quick tangent on the pine. It's a little hike in from the camping ground from the campground 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little more. And then you're at these really gorgeous uh, pools of water that are just flowing in. You throw out a nice attractor pattern, a hopper, and those fish are just smashing it with good presentation, of course. And so that one's also a gorgeous hike. I think it's like 12 miles in uh, to hike that. 
Uh, but going back to living in Vallecito, they get quite a bit more snow than town does. So that's something you really wanna be aware of. You'll definitely get a lot more snow, um, harder to get into town sometimes when they get that kind of snow. And so again, you'll have lower home prices out there. They're considered in the Bayfield area. Uh, so lower home prices, you are 30 to 40 minutes from downtown Durango. Something to really be aware of when you're looking at areas around Vallecito. But again, in the summer, it's a mecca. It's gorgeous, it's amazing. You want to buy yourself a boat, paddleboard, and you can enjoy that uh, awesome Vallecito Lake all summer long. All right, so the next thing is HOAs and covenants. This was not approved by the HOA. Now this is something you might be very aware of living in LA or Colorado Springs or Denver or Texas, right? Um, but there's definitely some nuances to these. Um, the first thing is knowing the right to do Airbnb, right? You might only live here six months of the year. Some of these don't allow Airbnbs or some of them it's like 30 day minimum. Um, places like the ranch, 30 day minimum. I forget if Dalton Ranch is 30 day minimum. I know they do allow Airbnbs, um, but it might be 30 day. So you'd have to check on that or we can check on that for you. Then once you get out in the county, you're pretty, more, uh, pretty much more opened up to allowing Airbnb but you still wanna check on covenants, right? If it doesn't have an HOA, you wanna check on covenants. The next one that you really wanna be aware of, especially if you're moving from a city that you probably rarely have these, is easements. So easements, you might've heard of an easement when you have like a utility easement. So we recently, or a couple of years ago, moved from Albuquerque, and we of course service that area as well. And they have a lot of easements where it's just a utility easement, you know, the. P&M, the electric company, can go back into your yard to service the um, electric uh, work that they have back there, or they have going on. So here, you'll see a lot of properties where there's a house at a dead end, there's one on the way, and there's only one road to their house, right? So that road is an easement into theirs, but you might own all the land around it. Um, sometimes there's properties where there's a road going right through the middle of your property to get to somebody else's uh, land. And so you really want to look into easements. Um, the title company, of course, is going to help you out with that. But that's something to just be really conscious of. You also might see lower home prices and be like, what's going on? That could be it as well. You know, it could be something people don't want people just driving through their backyard when it's they're on 20 acres and they want their privacy. All right, the next thing that I think is so important is when is the best time to buy? Now, in my opinion, of course, if you're just planning on moving here, you've got a new job, um, buy, buy whenever, of course. But if you really want that best time to buy, you wanna kinda of sit it out and wait. Um, now let's just say irrespective of interest rates, irrespective of the market, uh, the winter is a great time to buy because you don't have as many people visiting and just falling in love with a place and throwing in an offer. Um, you have a lot more people that are serious that are looking if they're gonna buy it in the winter. There's less homes on the market, so of course that's something to be super aware of. You got more homes on the market generally in the summer. Um, but our story is we were on a biking trip going through Colorado and Moab area. Drove through here, my parents lived here, still do. And we're driving through, we saw this gorgeous house, gorgeous area, and we made an offer. And so we see a lot of other people doing that as well. You know, they're on vacation here, they're relaxed, they're loving it, and they're like, let's pick up a, a property here. And so it's gonna be a lot less competitive in the winter. All right, the next thing going back to snow is, is your home a north facing, south facing home? Is there big tree right over your driveway where it's affecting the snow to melt? Because we forgot to shovel the driveway. Um, so what we've seen is our snow doesn't melt as well on our driveway where we're at. Um, and so there are a bunch of big trees kind of covering the driveway. And so, of course, it's not the end of the world, right? If you love the house, if you love the neighborhood, it's worth it generally. Um, but what we will see is it'll mess up your driveway over time, start to make the concrete come up and kind of peel up. And so just to be brutally honest, we're having that issue with our driveway right now. Um, but obviously just take that into account. Just be aware of that when you're going into it. If there's, let's say there's 10 other issues with the house and then you add that one in there, you might say, forget it, let's look somewhere else. And then on top of that, um, the, you know, you gotta get out there and essentially scrape that snow off quite a bit more often versus it just melting. 
Um, you could have a neighbor next to you that just melts and you're out there scraping the, the snow off the driveway and trying to get that ice up uh, when it's you know 30 degrees out. All right, the next thing you really need to know is Durango is super dog friendly. Dogs are cool. Um, now, we don't have a ton of dog parks, I would say, but we do have a really big, really cool dog park that's right on the Animus River. Uh, now, I mentioned this before, right as you're getting into town coming from, uh, from the New, New Mexico, coming from the south, and you see this big sign, Welcome to Durango, to the left, there's a big dog park there. Uh, now, I will say the con to this is it's not fully fenced. So it's fenced quite a bit, but it's not fully fenced in. Um, it does go down to the river. Another thing I mentioned earlier, there are signs that say that there are rattlesnakes there. Just be aware of that. Um, but really cool area. And it kind of goes up a cliffside. So obviously you're not too worried about dogs running up that way. Um, but going west, it uh, isn't fully fenced in there. Uh, the other thing is downtown is super dog friendly as well. I love seeing when we're walking downtown, there's little signs that say, uh, you know, dog or water bowl or whatnot, and they've got water bowls, they've got treats out there. Um, and so Durango's just super cool for dogs. We've got the Animus River Trail. Uh, you see plenty of people running and walking with their dogs down here. And there's a lot of great trails that dogs are allowed on. All right, the next thing you guys need to know is the weather. It is lovely weather we are having. Right, we've discussed this in other videos, but the weather is unpredictable. So I've mentioned this when I'm talking about being able to fly out. You get, uh, we get those thunderstorms in the afternoon in the summer. There's no thunderstorm. So you get a lot of lightning. So you really want to be aware of that, especially if you're coming from somewhere where you're just, maybe you haven't done a lot of hiking. You really want to be aware of that lightning when you're at the top of a 14er. Um, we just did a hike recently. We did uh, El Diente, then did the traverse over to Mount Wilson. And we made sure to be up we we're up at, I don't know, 4.30 in the morning, hiking on the trail by five. Um, we were down the trail by, I wanna say noon or somewhere around there, and then completely off the trail by three, right? And you just, you wanna get off that mountain in the morning or in the early afternoon before those thunderstorms come in. Uh, and so that's the biggest thing to the weather. Like obviously not a big deal if you're hanging out at home usually. Um, still be aware, like we do have, um, we're aware of some friends, friends of some friends that um, did get struck by lightning, right? It, it does happen. Um, this is the mountains, it is unpredictable. Again, snow, snow is unpredictable too, um, especially in the, in the back country, it could just start dumping on you and you just really wanna be aware of that. You wanna be aware of that with your car, with your preparation, kinda of like I mentioned earlier. All right, the next thing, I've mentioned this in other videos, but the shopping is pretty limited. Pool, there's no shopping malls, there's no cable. Um, I'll keep this short because I have mentioned this in other videos, but stuff like Costco, um, Sam's Club, Target, a lot of those are pretty limited. Not to mention, and this isn't something I mentioned earlier, we really don't have much of a mall. No malls. Right? We have a mall, um, there's a few stores, but it's not anything like your mall, even in Albuquerque, Denver, Phoenix, uh, Amarillo, Houston, we really don't have any big mall with a lot of options. Somewhere you wanna just go hang out, you wanna get a drink at the mall, walk around, we really don't have that. Um, we do have a few great movie theaters. I think they offer, have some great offers or options. Uh, we don't have a, what was I gonna say? We don't have an IMAX theater, uh, that would be really cool. But, um, but we've got some great, uh, great options a little bit south of us. So Farmington, drive about an hour away, hour south of us, and they do have a uh, Sam's Club. Don't believe they have a Costco. They do have a Target. They have Chick-fil-A. Mentioned this in other videos, but grab your Chick-fil-A uh, down in Farmington. You just got an hour drive down there. Totally worth it. And, uh, and then again, Farmington's got a lot of other great amenities as far as mountain biking and other stores, um, other banks that we might have, might not have here as well. All right, and the other thing is make sure you do your research before you go hiking. I gotta do some research here. I really recommend um, downloading either All Trails or the Hiking Project. The Hiking Project is REI's app. Great website, great app. Really read the description um, to see if it's above your level, right? There's, uh, we recently did El Diente, I just mentioned this, but El Diente Traverse over to Wilson. 
there's definitely a lot of scree field, which is um, which is where you're just walking on like kind of shale rock. Um, so it can be pretty taxing, right? Uh, some really steep elevation climb, some kind of almost rock climbing moves on some of this stuff. So if you're not confident with rock climbing, with climbing, with being out for a long time, um, make sure you are, or just really look at the trails first. Get used to some stuff that's maybe not quite as advanced. Um, they do a really good job of rating these. They'll put a uh, black diamond, double black diamond, blue, and then they'll describe the trail. The other thing is reach out to us, reach out to anybody else, reach out to the stores in town. The stores in town, like um, uh, there's a lot of great stores that will uh, tell you just what the trail is like. Hey, hey yeah, this one actually, it's, it's, all, it's already May, but hey, this one actually still has snow on it. Like this is at 14,000 feet. So you really wanna be aware of snow. It could be a gorgeous day in Durango, but there could be a bunch of snow on the trail as you go 5,000 feet higher than Durango. Uh, so some things to really be aware of when you're looking to go hiking in Durango again just comes back to be conscious or be smart about it and then just talk to other people talk to people always do your research by the way if you guys are even thinking about moving to Durango Colorado make sure to give us a call text email we've got your back when it comes to moving here to Durango Colorado thank you so much for watching <laughs>